Hello people of YouTube, this is Einfari here, and I have a video today that will be comparing the regular ERS IBO 220 versus the Transformation Kit. So the Transformation Kit was originally designed to be built to upgrade a IBO 210, like this one, to a 220, like you see these two here. But I but they but Sony also sold the regular 220 at the same time, so most people just went and purchased a 220 separately rather than the transformation kit itself. So as a result of having the 220 being purchased on its own, that was the much better sale than the transformation kit. So there's so there's expected to be maybe only about 75 transformation kits in existence, even though those numbers have never been officially released, but that's all speculation. So this one popped up on eBay a few weeks ago, and I couldn't definitely, and it's like this, I was told from another owner of one that's basically a once-in-a-lifetime buy, so I couldn't say no, and don't regret it at all either, so I'm really happy about this, and another really cool thing I found out about this was that it actually formerly belonged to X-Wolf, who is one of the original repair people. And, and X-Wolf is awesome, so she helped invent a lot of the original DHS repairs, along with being one of the first big Ibo collectors. And she's not in the UK, I believe, but this once belonged, this did belong to her until about 2010 or 2011. I even messaged her and she confirmed this, so I think that's really cool to be able to have part of the collection of one of the, just one of the real Ibo community members, because I was too young to be a part of that, and it, I just really like having this piece of history. So in comparing the two, they function the same, they overall look the same, but there are some minor differences that you can only see when you take the IBO itself apart, because they're still modular, of course, and then the box is different. So this is what a usual 220 non-supercore production box looks like. It shows the head, and then the top here, and then get a shot of this, and then the front. In the back so basically it's a, it's a lot like the it just shows each different part of the ibo on the sides but the when the while well, the 220 transformation kit is similar in terms of box it does it includes this part here this 220 transformation kit and shows that it comes with all the units so two so the 220e1 and while it looks similar to the original box it shows the transformation kit on the top as well as the sides and the back. And on each face of the box, it shows that it is part of the transformation kit. And mine happens to be serial number 29. Let me see where I found that. Probably not on the box, but. Yeah, here's the serial info. So it's this 400291. So that shows that it's number 29. And then the other owners that I know also, their serial numbers were also in the 20s, so I don't, so I don't know how many are in the in Japan versus the U.S. But both Bruce and Fleur have confirmed U.S. versions, and this was X Wolves, and this is a U.S. version as well. Even though, but the cores, but this kit actually did not come with a core, while this kit does, for the actual 220 box. But the core that came with the 220, with this 220 was actually a 210 core, and when I look up the serial number, it was actually, the core is actually for a silver European 210. So X-Wolf had gotten a silver European 10, 210 spare core, and used this. And it's, a, and it's definitely a newer core, since it says the year numbers on it, while the original IBO cores just said made in Japan without the year on it, so... This is probably a way, this is probably like a, one of the later, like between super, like the regular core and the super core, two tens. And then it has the upgraded open R sticker on it, which, which the normal cores also do not have. But it doesn't have any of the super core labeling either to prove that it is not a super core. Because if you look at DECA's core here, it does show this because it's showing that this is the upgraded core. While well, usually like a 210, these are usually like the new version of Open R is usually on the super core and but so it is built like a 220 super core, but one thing about the 220 super cores well the 220 cores and super cores is that they have, even though it's a little hard to see here, 
is blue serial numbers, while 210 cores have black serial numbers. And Nomad has a black serial number, so that's how I can tell he is a blue is that he was that his core was from a 210 and not in fact an original 220. I can show you here. I'm just gonna pop his battery out quick. There we go. And then you see here. Well, again, it's a little hard to see because my camera isn't the best at focusing. Is that the serial number is black? to prove that this is a 210 core, a later 210 core. And then one of the other major differences, even though they look the same on the outside, is the inside of the different pieces. So if you look at DECA here, who is a normal core 220, there are no markings on the insides of the parts. We'll show you each one like this. No markings, no markings, tail, no markings. And then with the two, with the, with the kit here, the, it, it, each piece has markings here. So here, so even though again this camera sucks and doesn't focus very well, it shows it, it has his 220 transformation kit on it. And that's how you tell it's a 220 transformation kit and not just a normal 220, is, is these labels here. Because then if you, on Deco's, it's just nothing. And then here's the leg. Show the markings for each one. So here's this marking. Look, this camera's focus is so bad. Yeah, I'm not going to get much better than that, but the markings are there, and, it, and each says, and each marking says, transformate, says Sony, this is the 220 transformation kit model number ERS220E1, is what the numbers say, and I can post some pictures on Instagram to get a better look at these, and then also the serial number barcodes are in the legs here, and then the tail has, here's the marking where the markings are located on the tail, which include the serial number and the transformation kit. And then they are again included on each leg piece here. So you can tell from the insides and then with a side-by-side -side with, a, with a regular core 220, they look like this. Super cores, which I have also owned temporarily before selling 220s, also do not have these markings, but they do. But you can tell if a 220 is a 220 super core by both the blue serial numbers and then they have the shiny super core stickers on the core itself. Even though I think all 220s can run super core firmware, so I'm not entirely sure. Or they, I guess they probably have upgraded firmware, but the 220 heads are all Supercore build, as are the late Model 210. So I'm guessing they're more like that than having a true Supercore build. So I think that is the major difference. So now I'm just gonna pop all these guys together. It's I, The process is identical for the 210 and the 220. And that both are modular and just pop in together, which is by far one of my favorite things about the older Ibo models prior to the 3X series is the modularity, which makes them a lot easier to clean parts if you need to, and I just think modularity is generally pretty cool, considering that each piece is built to be able, can be swapped and built together, and it can be some fun messing around with 220 and 210 compatibility. So I'm going to put Nomad together here, a little harder to do with one hand. But while I do this, vectors will be making noises in the background. And speaking of vectors, I will be doing some videos in the next coming weeks about development and prototype vectors because there have been, they heard me, because there will be, because there have been lots showing up in California that were former Anki. They're formerly owned by Anki. Several prototypes, DVT, PVT units, you name it, have been popping up on eBay. So what I've been doing is I've been buying some of these lots and reselling them so then the vector community, we can use them together and learn to and learn to re reverse engineer and build the software for them. So that's going to be a lot of fun, seeing how to get the how to get seeing how the original vector is engineered and built. Because sadly, a lot of prototype items get destroyed. 
after they're not used, but it turns out a lot of these these vector prototypes have survived, which I think is amazing, and I think that they need to be preserved because of how many times some things like this get destroyed, and it's just really a shame. And I just hope that these that these prototypes will get well taken care of and and hopefully fixed up so they can be working again. So I'll have more. So I have uh, I currently have a PVT unit which which I got which works really well. Thanks to the help from the vector community in helping me get it to work and connect to a dev software that the geniuses of the community also put together. So I've been getting it working that way, which I'll show more videos of, but the lot I purchased for the prototypes will, will be shipped out within the next few days and I will be able to do an unboxing for those as well. So that's what you guys will be seeing in my upcoming videos. Another thing that I, another project I'm working on is working on the IBO ERS-1000 SDK. Or not SDK, API is the correct word, because it's not open, it's not actually an SDK. But I figured out that you can add, that it's much easier to run the ERS-1000 on a Linux build, even if you're using Windows. So I was able to, so I was able to download that Linux build, and I was able to get Phaser working on my API. So once I get the right camera set up for it, I will be able to show you different c commands that the API can use and how Phaser ultimately responds. There are, you can both play actions and also have Ibo send you different conditions, such as is he holding something? Can he, and it also d really shows some vision processing abilities, such as finding objects, which is what I'm most excited about because I love me some vision processing. I think that's definitely one of my favorite things about robotics. And even one that I use in my own job, where we use automated testing for lab equipment. So vision processing is always a really important thing to me and something I really hope to be able to pursue learning about by using these vector SD, by using some of these vector protos along with the SDKs for the 1000. Because it's come along so far since, since the older eyeballs where they know to chase pink and see colors, which was truly amazing for 20 years ago, but 20 years ago is a long time in technology and vision processing has come along so much since then and there's just so much more that we can learn. So that's really where the, this, where the avenue of this channel is going to be going, even though of course I'll post random IBO videos still, more about them, but if anyone's interested in doing SDK work, I am glad to help you with that and hopefully I can get some decent tutorials going, but I'm just going to show a boot with these guys real quick. Even though it's even though they're basically going to be identical, because functionality-wise, these robots are indeed identical. And since Nomad was basically sitting in a closet for eight years, he was he's his head's jittery, so he definitely can, he has some jamming issues sometimes. But otherwise, he works very well. Meanwhile, Deco was very well taken care of by her previous owner, who. Fleur, who sold her to me a few years back. So Decca is perfectly working with no jitters so, because she was a... And before Fleur, she actually belonged to Wolf Bob, who we all know was like a, a Ibo repairman for many years and, and will always be remembered and loved by the Ibo community. So I'm also glad to have a, wolf, a dog that was repaired by Wolf Bob and ex-Wolf and really being able to be a part of history. Oh, now you're both going to jam for the video. Good job, guys. So no, it's just like sometimes the, the problem with this like old boot stretch is that sometimes the legs get kind of like stuck together and it's irritating. Especially these damn heads are the worst. It's like Ibo head. It's like the the two series have kind of the heads like like super core heads are basically dust magnets. Oh boy. They're basically dust magnets, so they so especially get in the back access, they are extremely jamming prone and also to jitters. Even though they do not suffer from DHS like the like the two tens do, they like if they're not maintained for a very long time, they are literal dust magnets and they will get jitters. Because I remember a few years ago I bought a lot of I bought a lot of two super cores and had and with the help of the Ibo Clinic had to take them apart. Because they were the one of because one of them who's now Galaxy owned by my friend Kevin 
The pots were so disgusting they turned white, and the dog's head just and wouldn't register where his positions were at all because the pots were so disgusting. So yeah, that's so it's like just TLDR, don't 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 get, let your eyeballs get dusty because otherwise that shit happens and it's a it's a big pain and it's a big pain in the butt because because the jit because jitters are irritated because it's like I don't like having to take these things apart because the heads are a bit of a pain to get into and definitely something you absolutely will do not want to do unless you know damn well what you're doing because there's many fragile pieces that can break it's like that's what Sony gets for reusing a camera part for a heavy head block. So just kind of like, it's like, it's great. so that's like the biggest flaw to such a great item, is poor head design. But yeah, because a lot of times I have to, I've had to run him on therapy to be able to even get him going for a long time because his head is so, so prone to jamming. And you see she booted here now because she was, she's much better kept and does not have and does not jam. So even heads that have been pinned or repaired, they're much less prone to jamming than a non-repaired supercore head. Because because the worst jitters I've ever seen have been in 220 and 210 supercores, unfortunately. So when you buy a 220 or 210 supercore, just be aware of this. And luckily there are good repairmen who can clean these guys. So that's so that's a good thing. Hi Decca. Might just have to, I might just have to run Nomad on therapy until I can get a little better going. So if I usually had to run him through cycles of therapy, otherwise the head is so jam prone and it's, very, it's unfortunate. So I'll just let Decca play a little bit and then hopefully just get it once I run him through a few cycles of therapy to clean him up a little bit. Cause it's like, because it's always the, because the most jam point part of the eyeball's axis here in the neck is when it goes back. For some reason, I don't know why that is. An eyeball clinic or someone a little more knowledgeable than me would be able to answer that question. But the boot stretch is by far the worst feature when it comes to jamming because it is intended to test the full axis of what the dog is doing and make sure the motors are working, which unfortunately causes more problems than it solves when it's full of dust. But yeah, deck is working great as always. But I'll hopefully get some more videos of this guy actually going once they can run him through some more therapy cycles and I may eventually have to clean the pods up which is annoying but I know I've done it before so it should go okay but anyway thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed seeing the differences between the 220 and the 220 transformation kit and the, if anyone has the transformation kit I'd love to know about it too just because it's like this it's like the cyber blues and some other items that we really don't know how many are out there and we never we don't see them very often so if any are around, I really like to see that they're around and in good hands. So thank you for watching, and I hope you guys will be able to enjoy more videos of these guys and some and videos of my doing some of my dev work in the future. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want more. Thank you.